I just completed my first 10 miles. And welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, morning versus evening rides. Which is better and why it matters. We've also got a story about how tiring roads could be the most dangerous. Cargo bikes go mainstream and plenty more besides. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Peter Sagan is the world's highest paid professional cyclist, bringing home an estimated five and a half million euros. Yeah, Lakeep posted a list of riders and their estimated incomes. Second was Chris Froome taking home 4.5 million a year, and teammate Geraint Thomas was taking home 3.5 million a year. Yeah, they were just two of the five Ineos riders packed inside the top 10. So quite familiar scenes there, but earnings rather than racing results this time. Now, we also learned that if for some reason you decided to ride over your house, you should probably be careful. Yeah, this is a video you have to check out called Garden Rampage, done by top mountain biker, Brendan Ferglove. Now, but well, it's getting extreme without even leaving his garden. No, it's just as well that the lad can now get out and about a bit, isn't it? Now, speaking of which, <laughs> lockdowns are easing in many parts of the world. And so for a lot of us, I think, we're, we're getting out on the bikes and readjusting to perhaps a, a new and slightly different way of riding. Although some bits do feel reassuringly familiar. Some of you might have the luxury of being able to ride your bikes whenever you like. For a lot of us though, I suspect cycling is something that gets sandwiched in between work and other life commitments. But that doesn't need to be a bad thing. If you have to ride early in the morning or into the evening, you can actually have the world to yourself, a world that looks at its absolute best. No surprising that so many pictures in GC and Inspiration feature sunrises or sunsets. The question is though, which is best from an enjoyment perspective and from a training perspective, morning or evening? So the perfect time for me is around now. It's 6 p.m. in the evening. I've done a full day's work and I can relax, enjoy the sunset behind me. And after all, I can uh, well, look forward to a beer when I get home. And also, the temperature's a little bit better than the morning. Now, 15 years ago, you couldn't have paid me to say this, but nowadays, I think mornings are great. Let me check this out. Not your usual sound of a Monday morning, I'll grant you, but this is fantastic. The air's a little bit cooler. Not something you tend to have to worry about here in the UK, I'll grant you, but still, a bit of a bonus. And But more than that, it's like a kind of clarity, like a freshness to the air. I do, of course, have time constraints. I have to get back. I have to do a day's work. I've got to put breakfast on the table. But there's just something so thrilling about getting an hour's worth of grey day riding in before you then sit down at your desk. It's like, it's like you've got a head start. It's like you've already won. Yes. Now, of course, which is best is intensely personal, but science may be able to help as well. Well, some research shows that you can perform better physical maximum in the evening compared to the mornings. However, that's just for one effort, not repeated efforts. The freshness that you get from the morning allows you to dig deeper for longer. So you'd be able to ride up one hill faster in an evening, but you'd be able to ride up that same hill faster more times in the morning. Now, some research suggests that certain hormone levels in the evening means that training at that time of day is better suited to building muscle mass. Which, I mean, I'm living proof of this. I used to love training in an evening. Lloydy, you won't be surprised here, more of a morning kind of athlete. Now then, one bit of research though that I particularly like split their research group into two based on their natural circadian rhythm. So whether they tended to get up early in the morning, were early birds, or tended to stay awake later in an evening, night owls. They then put that same group through a series of physical and mental challenges at different times of day. Now what they found was that no one performed at their physical peak first thing in the mornings, but early birds did perform significantly better. They reached their physical peak after being awake for six hours, so close to lunchtime, I guess, but then declined steadily for the rest of the day. Night owls, however, whilst they started the day sluggishly, continued to build their performance right through until they went to bed. 
Now, one last thing I'm gonna throw at you is a bit of a curveball mental fatigue. So mentally fatigued bike riders don't perform as well as mentally fresh ones. You might not be able to make particularly good decisions, certainly not make them quickly, and you'll also not actually be able to put as much physical effort out. So you won't go as fast. However, there is evidence to suggest that training when mentally fatigued can add an extra training stimulus. So potentially training tired means that you would then perform better when you're physically fresh. So something to bear in mind perhaps if you've got a particularly demanding daily routine that you might not be able to train as well, but doing it every now and then would probably be advantageous. So I guess it's fair to say that it's a bit of swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Advantages to each, so probably, if you have the luxury, you should mix things up. Oh, by the way, that's not a new Allium. That's, uh, that's a microphone that I've actually finally got. Now that is super interesting, but to be honest, well, I'm not a morning person. I prefer to train in the evenings, and I find after a good day's work, get out, get some good hard training in the evening, just works better for me. What do you think? Yeah. Well, to be fair, mate, it surprised me. You're always bright-eyed and bushy-tailed in the morning, so uh, so I'm surprised to hear you say you're not a morning person. I, like, so back in the olden days, when I used to cycle to an actual place of work, I always used to do my, like, hard training on the way home as opposed to on the way in. I just felt better. So probably like you there, but now... I kind of don't do that anymore, and I can just ride doing whatever in a morning pre-work. I kind of, I'm kind of getting into morning rides, to be honest with you. Ah. So, I also, I also whisper it, think that there's an age component, James, as well, going on here. So, uh, <laughs> so I do think maybe as you as you mature further, you might start riding in the mornings. I don't know. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm super interested to know what you all think down in the comment section. Do make sure you let us know, are you a morning or an evening type of bike rider, or are you one of the lucky ones who can go out whenever the heck they please? It's now time for your weekly inspiration, the part of the show where you submit your photos with the chance of winning three pretty cool prizes. Right, so are you gonna kick us off with third place? I am indeed, right, so third place winning uh, some Italian themed GCN striped socks. There is a, a strong Italian theme going through our prize this week, we'll explain at the end. This is an absolute banger of a photo, another bleak British moorland, we're not quite sure which part of Britain it is, but I, we're pretty confident it is from these shores, isn't it? Uh, this is Caelan Harrington, first long ride of the year and the weather was cracking, not a soul on the road, just a few sheep. I mean. That does look pretty amazing. It does. Uh, one of those yeah. rare days where there is a moorland and blue skies, but uh, but man, we've been they're very good. lucky lately, haven't we? Side a lot of blue skies around the UK. Um, yeah. So yeah. Unprecedented, mate. Unprecedented. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. In second place, winning a GCN Italia navy blue T-shirt and GCN striped socks. Italian. I'm wearing one of those T-shirts now, James. Actually. Oh, very nice. Mm. Very nice. Not the um, prize. Uh, <laughs> You'll get a fresh one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, coming from Tri-12, evening ride in the hills of Utah. From up there, I felt on top of the world. Now, I don't oh know about God. you, Sai, but I don't know if you uh, struggle with a bit of vertigo, but that is something, well, we wouldn't advise you try. It looks pretty sketchy up there, but for his <laughs> efforts, I think we should award him a good prize, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that is absolutely terrifying, but amazing, nonetheless. Incredible. It, uh, First prize, uh, this uh, wins a GCN Italy t-shirt that I'm wearing now, uh, a striped jersey and also the striped socks. So a big prize bundle there. And the winner is M. Ertegril Karahan. Uh, this is the road to Dervent Valley uh, in Turkey. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I like that. Something I mean, quite strikingly different, isn't it? Yeah, I like that a lot. And do you know what? The, the, the different thing about this week's side is we haven't gone for any sunsets on sunrises. We've actually gone for blue skies, which is interesting. And uh, yeah, but I definitely think that's a deserved winner. Um, yeah. Cracking photo. Ro yeah, road to nowhere. Love that. Some lovely geology going on in the background. Can we just have a moment to look at those rock formations? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I, ca I can't tell you anything about them, James, but I, I, th I think they're very striking. <laughs> no, uh, right. I there is our top three for this week. Um, of course, if you want to take part next week, you simply have to upload your inspirational photos to the GCN app. Uh, and when you're in the GCN app, of course, you'll see that there are stacks more amazing photos on there for you to have a look through. Although these were our favorites of the week. 
It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we go back to last week. Actually, we had so many amazing comments under the show about the news from Strava. A lot of people were broadly supportive of the change and kind of understanding of the reasons why Strava have done it. But then also a lot of people feeling really upset about it. Particularly, I think the timing of the announcement, given that so many extra millions of people are out of work at the moment. Yeah, the one thing I did find a bit funny though is people were saying that they could use Garmin Connect as an alternative. But there is quite a high price entry on that one, seeing as you have to buy a Garmin every three years. And that could well, be yeah, quite no, pricey. I, yeah, I did think that was the same as well, actually. But, um, but yeah, funny one there. But I suppose if you've already bought one, then it's kind of free, isn't it? But still, you've got to make that initial investment. Now, a lot of us are racing and riding indoors at the moment, platforms like Zwift. If you're anything like me, you might have been getting a bit of a kicking in Zwift racing. But this tweet from Tom Stegent, well, I found slightly reassuring. Uh, he says that uh, it's easier to drop real life pros in the Tour de France than it is to win a Zwift race. And to be honest, Cy, I am so grateful to see that tweet because I thought it was just me and my lack of form because I've been doing a fair bit of Zwift racing as I know you have. But it was really cool to see that a World Tour Pro is finding it as hard as we are. Well, you know what, mate? I, I actually think a lot of it is down to technique. You know, you could be the strongest rider in a real world peloton and yet have never ever won a bike race. And I think the same is true of e-racing. You know, you've got to learn your craft. It is really different and it's not all about having an engine the size of Thomas de Gens, although that probably will help. Now that does link in though to news from Canyon ZCC, which is their e-racing team. They have linked up with Verve, who make the info crank power meter. And the reason they've done so, they say, is because they want to be the most transparent e-racing team when it comes to results. And apparently that power meter, coupled with a smart trainer, in their case, the Wahoo, is like the gold standard for being credible, basically. Oh, interesting. Now, one person who has put in a lot of time on their indoor trainers in their rather fancy pain cave is, of course, four-time Tour de France champion Chris Froome. Rumours are floating around about Chris Froome's possible move away from Team Ineos, a team where he spent the last 10 years. Yeah, this is big, isn't it? An awful lot of news stories about this one, and unsurprisingly so. It stems, I think, from the fact that Froome now shares his team with two other Tour de France winners, plus one other Grand Tour winner, all of whom are super hungry for success. And he is, of course, on the road to recovery after that horrific injury. And so therefore isn't guaranteed top spot for the Tour de France. In fact, he's not even guaranteed a place in the Tour de France team. So he is potentially looking around. Egan Bernal's teammate signed up until the end of 2023. Garen Thomas until the end of 2021, whereas Froome's contract expires this year. Now I say it here and now, Cy, si, could this be the move of the year? Well, if he does move, it definitely would be. But man, you've got to have some deep pockets. Four and a half million euros a year, remember? Yeah, now on to some other exciting news now. Axel Merckx could be bringing the world's back to US soil. Yeah, that would be exciting, wouldn't it? Last time the Worlds were in the US was in Richmond, Virginia in 2015, and we saw some amazing racing. Peter Sagan started his golden run of world titles there, and also Lizzie Dignan captured her world championship victory there too. Yeah, Axel Merckx, son of cycling legend Eddie Merckx, and an ex-pro himself, is leading the bid to bring the Worlds back to US soil, specifically Portland, Oregon in 2025 or 2026. So super exciting news for you US viewers. Yeah, it's a long time away though, isn't it? Mm. Although hopefully we'll be able to have some racing by then. So uh, keep your fingers crossed. Now, uh, we've got some science for you now, courtesy of Cycling Science on Twitter. This one was published in the journal Advances in Transportation Studies. Oh, Cy, that is one of my favorites. Yeah. Of course it is, mate. Anyway, this is really interesting, actually. So the study has a new twist on cycling safety because it looks at riders' heart rate and hypothesizes that when riders are tired, they make more mistakes. Therefore, tiring sections of road are more dangerous to cyclists. 
Now clearly the authors aren't bike riders because I have never felt more alert than when my heart rate is 180 BPM. I mean, I'm like a rabbit in headlights. <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, mate, I'm exactly the same. I, I think I'm at my best when, uh, when I'm on the limit. Although maybe, maybe if I was doing like a full max interval, then perhaps towards the end there, things might get a bit fuzzy around the edges and I might make the odd bad decision. But, uh, but generally speaking, I yeah, don't know what they're talking about. Now, talking of newcomers to this sport, you might have noticed a masked figure around seven foot tall riding around the streets of LA. Now, if you have, you could have spotted world-class basketball player, Lakers team member, Javel McGee, who posted this on Instagram. What do we think, Si? He's in a spot of trouble there, isn't he? Yeah, I don't think he's watched one of our How to Fix a Puncture videos, James, unfortunately. No. But uh, anyway, off, it happens to the best of us, phoning neutral service to get us home. Um, <laughs> also, James, can I just say a big thank you for bringing back Tenuous Cycling Celebrity of the Week, which uh, is a segment that's had a leave of absence of about two and a half years on the GCN show. So, uh, so yeah. Good, good stuff. Now, another thing uh, that has had a rich run of form in the GCN show has been cargo bike news, something I never thought I'd be particularly excited about, but I really am now. DHL have partnered up with Reef Technologies, and they've done so in a few European cities, but now it's on US soil. So in Miami, they're gonna be replacing some of their delivery vans with e-cargo trikes, which is absolutely brilliant. They reckon it's gonna save stacks of CO2, Plus, of course, you won't get smelly traffic pollution and indeed noise pollution as well. So oh. high fives all around for that. Cool stuff, that side. Now, I have got some bad news, I'm afraid. Now, if you're after a mid-range bike and you've purchased it, now you could be waiting quite a while to receive it. Bicycle companies are doing everything they can to get as many bikes to us as possible, but they seem to have dried up. A Brooklyn bicycle company has shown that they've upped 600% on 2019. So I guess, Si, this means, well, only good things for us cyclists, but not for the mid-range bikes. <laughs> well, no. Or maybe if you could just save up a bit, bit more, you could get a, uh, a super posh bike, because I don't think they've sold out quite yet. There is that. Okay, it's time now for Hack forward slash bodge of the week. That part of the show where we go through some of the amazing uploads to the GCN app from the hack or bodge section. This one kicks things off. This is a bit of a niche one, isn't it? From Thomas O. Mounting your Garmin underneath your seat. Not the most visible place, but apparently it's the rules for track riding. Isn't that right, James? Yeah, that's correct. All the track riders, they can't have their bike computers on their bars, so they've got to find some ingenious ways to stash it where you can still record your data. And a lot of track cyclists put it under your saddle. So uh, I guess that's where he's got his inspiration using some cable ties and mounted it up under there. Um, uh, so I would say, you know, to me, that's a pretty good hack. Uh, well, uh, mm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, go on then, hack. Right, well, the GCN uh, audience, you guys think it's a hack too. 70% of you voted hack, in fact, which, um, well, it does take me by surprise because it does look a bit of a bodge, but, you know, I'll hold, I'll hold fire for that one. Uh, right, next up, we got this one, a chain ring clock made out of an old, um, chain ring from a rally. It's quite neat, isn't it? I love that site. I love some uh, some old cycling parts made into home decor. Love that. Uh, yeah, I think that's a hack. And 84% of, uh, of the app users think it's a hack too. So uh, there we go. That's quite unanimous when it comes to hack or bodge that, isn't it? Uh, it's right, gotta be, yeah. next up, treadmill training. What is this all about, James? Well, it sounds to, it, it didn't seem to, uh, his smart chain doesn't seem to work, so he's found a solution where that he uses a mountain bike and mounts it upon a treadmill using the forks there, kind of like balancing over the bars. It works, it looks quite good. I don't know how stable it will be though, Si. I think that's genius. Yeah, so yeah, apparently he totaled his road bike uh, and then his mountain bike wouldn't fit on his smart trainer. So yeah, he's draped it over the front of a treadmill. Fair play to him, that's pretty cool, that. I kind of want to see a video of him riding it, though. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think that's a hack, mate. I'm going to be completely honest with you. What do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll go for a hack, mate. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go for a hack with you. 
We're on a limb there. 79% uh, of you think that it's a bodge, but um, but still, no, I, th I think that's a hack when need must. Uh, right, next up, uh, we've got this one, um, which was sent in by Gianni Bianchi, um, and this is indeed his Bianchi. So he's uh, color matched one of his spokes to uh, to match the frame. I think that's quite cool, actually, isn't it? Yeah, I I'm I'm all for customization doing your own customizing and uh, I know Ollie's into that too but yeah I do like uh, how yeah we kind of colored up a spoke to uh, match the uh, Bianchi as uh, Celeste colors love that yeah right James what's next right next up we have some homemade wall art now it's always difficult to mount your bike isn't it onto a onto a wall if you've got not much storage space, chuck it on your wall and it also looks good. Absolute bonus. But how can you get a mount? Now Robbo has made a mount out of some plug sockets, I think it is, Si. Or some cases, some casings. Crikey. Where he's able to uh, mount his pedal and that way he gets his bike onto his wall. That it looks better with the bike on, doesn't it? Actually, it looks it does. like a death trap when uh, when it's just stuck on the wall there. But um, but yeah, you can't argue with the results. I just I think execution could probably be better for it to be a true hack, don't you think? Yeah, I would agree there. I'm I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna say bodge. I don't know what 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 do the audience say? 55% uh, of the audience say bodge. So uh, so yes, I think that's yeah. Well, on the fence, but but I think. <laughs> 55% of you are right. Uh, yeah. Okay, last one now. This is super cool. Someone has built an integrated repair stand. This is Adam Taylor Bond. It's got two heights, he says, uh, 122 centimeters and 183 centimeters. So depending on which bit of your bike you're working on, it can be optimally positioned. Um, and it also swivels as well. And uh, it cost him $55, which is just genius. That's brilliant. That's <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Fair play to you. Yeah, love that. Yeah, thank you everyone for sending in your hacking bodges this week. Make sure that if you want to send in your hacking bodge, then go over to the GCN app. That way, everyone can, well, rate hack or bodge, and it's not just us, is it, is it Si? No, indeed not. And uh, also, yeah, you can get your vote in ahead of next week. It's caption competition time now, that part of the show where you get your chance to win a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. We give you a photo, you have to write a witty caption and stick it in the comment section down below. We select a winner. In fact, we'll start with the results, shall we? For a non-break with tradition. This was the photo we gave you last week, Jakob Fuglsang at home training. Um, that's a scene of domestic bliss, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> this week's winner is, of course, Brian McMahon. I think I got that right. For his caption, Daddy, I think you're taxing mum's patience. Do oh, know. genius. He's on a tax trainer, isn't he? Genius. He is. He is. That is a classic. Well done, Brian. That's, uh, yeah, a GCN Elite water bottle is winging its way to you. Right, what about this week's photo then? This is Eve Lampart, the uh, seriously talented one day rider, uh, with his tractor and his bike just next to it. So, uh, James, do you want to have a go at getting us started? Bit nervous about this one, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Now, Yves Lampard okay, is uh, known for his sprinting and his uh, fast paced riding. So, he's decided to, to drop his fast machine, the bicycle, and choose a slower form of transport, a tractor. Maybe that will slow him down a little bit. <laughs> it, it, I'm, cl I'm clutching at straws here, mate. Is that good enough? <laughs> yeah? So, I can't quite hear you, Sai. That, that good? Sigh. <laughs> well done, mate. That was pretty unique. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Unique see, to what yeah. I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, see if you can do better. Uh, in, put your caption in the comments section. We'll pick one next week. That probably won't be James's. Right, it's now time for comment of the week, the part of the show where we pick out some of the best comments that you leave under the latest videos. Now, this is actually a part of the show I really enjoy, Si, because it just shows how witty our audience are. Now, I'm going to kick off with this. Up to your standards, James, as yeah. we uh, as we exactly. heard from the caption photo. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, uh, now, we've got one in from Rob Chaston uh, under the GCN show. Ollie makes everything he does look hard. And then he tells us all about it. All about the suffering, all about the hard work. 
He is truly a hard man of the road, the track, and of course the living room. <laughs> <laughs> he does make things sound hard, doesn't yeah. he? I wouldn't have said that, Rob, but uh, but you know. I won't disagree with it either. Uh, right then, uh, this one from SAF1981. I did never sing last Friday and smashed the record for clearing out the fridge of food and a Magnum ice cream from the freezer. Genius. <laughs> I like that very much. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, that's a good reason to do an Everesting, isn't it? If you need to clean out the freezer afterwards. Well, exactly. Uh, under How Not To Be A Moron, uh, think Simon, but I didn't know GCN stands for Global Cycling Nanny. Well, there you have it. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, it's an interesting comment, isn't it, that one? And I can see why you might think that maybe it's not our place to suggest how riders should behave out and about, but I'm inclined to disagree. I think absolutely we should perhaps use our platform to, to try and help people make the right decisions when they're out and about for their own benefit and for that of the community around them. So, uh, so yeah, I think that's, that's totally, totally right, that video that we made, but uh, anyway. It's very, very good to get comments, whether they're positive or negative. Uh, we do read them all, don't we? And uh, we yeah, always we have a think about what they say. Uh, right then, um, under uh, Connor learning to wheelie in a day, hats off to the lads. That's, I still think that's brilliant. Um, but uh, Neil Simpson actually said that the best thing, in fact, the best thing about GCN in lockdown has to be Nigel, brother-in-law Nigel. The man's a legend. Uh, is he the reason that Connor was recruited? <laughs> Now, I've, I've got to say, Si, I've been thoroughly enjoying the content uh, that Nigel and Connor have been putting out. It's had me in stitches, so if you haven't seen those videos, do give them a watch. Now, I think it's about time we have a bit of an update from Nigel and his newfound stardom. Uh, it turns out the, the guy who works behind the meat counter in the supermarket is a GCN fan, and he gave me some free chicken. So that was nice. You know, there's a couple of hundred people who seem to enjoy what we've been doing, which is nice. It's, it's good. I, I, I've made a few points though. Just to be honest, to clarify that, you know, you're my brother-in-law by extension of, um, I'm not married to Stacey being my sister. That it's the other way around with you and Stacey. Just to clarify that, because some people seem to think that there was an unusual kind of brother-in-law status there. I can in fact ride a bike some people seem to think I couldn't ride a bike. People, again, people want more Nigel is the comment I see all the time. Yeah, and, and I keep seeing a reference to that, what, what was that band that, song, that had the song? Uh, we're only making plans for Nigel. Like that, that joke's worn thin now at this point. Let's, let's cut that one out. T-shirts, people have called for T-shirts. Now I haven't spoken to any of the GCN staff, but T-shirts are getting made. We're, we're gonna do that. Um, they, they want brother-in-law Nigel T-shirts. I haven't spoke to, any, as I said, any of the guys, but you can take it from me as fact, 100% definitely, that there will be t-shirts getting made. Um, uh, many comments about Connor being a big child. Uh, yeah. Why do you have to be calling me a big child? I, I'm not calling, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with people who have referred to you as a big child. Yeah, you kind of came into this family. I, it was me and my sister, and then you suddenly arrive in. And in the end of the day, like, you are staying here with us. And if I was to injure you with a digger or a shovel, like, you know, you're not gonna claim against me, are you? Because you're not going to be in the house much longer. Let's just face facts. Anyway, thanks Nigel, thanks for getting involved. Back to you guys. Well, cheers for that brother-in-law, Nigel. Now, one last comment under that video. This is from Sam Livingston. Um, Connor is the only man in the world who needs a drone to capture footage at head height. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I definitely don't need a drone. genius. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, now let's get us on to what is coming on the channel over the next seven days, shall we? Uh, on Wednesday, things we knew, wish we knew when we started cycling. So another one for all the people who are new to cycling at the moment. Thursday, the lost arts of cycling, okay? These are things that we think maybe that have been forgotten about over the last 10 years, but actually we need to bring them back. Like how to actually read a map or indeed just follow your nose. Very important skills. Uh, on Friday, we've got a video about tire pressure. So the bar is getting lower and lower. How low should you go? Uh, on Saturday, we've got road versus mountain bike. Who trains harder? I think this is your video, isn't it, James? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna give it a go. And uh, But I think we, you know, road does train harder, but we'll see in the video, I guess. <laughs> 
<laughs> we will indeed see in the video. Good luck with that one, mate. Uh, on uh, on Sunday, we've also then got the International Gravel Challenge. So this uh, is basically a bit of an antidote to the fact that we can't do any gravel races at the moment. So me and Jeremy uh, have challenged each other to an International Gravel Challenge. Ooh. Make sure you check that one out and see what it's all about. Excited for that one. Yeah. Right then, the only thing we need to say is just a reminder to head over to the app to watch all those amazing classic Giro stages that Dan is taking you through. So we've got the race footage itself, we've got amazing new commentary, plus we've got interviews with the riders themselves, okay? The people that actually made it happen. So some cracking new insights into, uh, well, some cracking classic stages. Right, it's now time for Extreme Corner. Now this one is, uh, well, quite cool actually. It's um, uh, making the most of those closed rows and quiet rows. Some Gravel Kids Adventure. Check out this done in Angeles National Forest. Riding from Red Box to Eaton Saddle was only two and a half miles. Here we go! <laughs> the daughter seems like she's having an absolute laugh back there, doesn't it? Yeah. To be fair, mate, that's one of the cool things about going for bike rides with your kids. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> Sounds yeah, a bit cheesy, true. doesn't it? But it's kind of true. Uh, right. That brings us towards the end of the GCN show now. One thing I would like to say, James, I'm very excited about this forthcoming week because I'm expecting a delivery. Do you know what a delivery is going to be? Oh, I'm, I have a feeling, but I, I kind of want to rugby tackle the postman. The new GCN kit, dude, <laughs> is apparently on its way. So I think Ollie has been trolling me on Instagram. Uh, he's posted kit shot after shot of him wearing that new kit every single day. He's either not washed it or he's not taken it off yet. So uh, anyway, but I will have my own new GCN Castelli kit. So yeah, that is very exciting indeed. And uh, potentially you'll get some more as well, James, I would imagine. In fact, you oh, probably already got stuff. Yours, haven't you now? Yeah, mate, I've got quite a bit to be fair. I think you um, were the last one on the list. Sorry about uh, that. Ah, well, never mind. Uh, right, thank you very much everyone for joining us here on the GCN show this week. Please give it a big thumbs up and we will see you next week. McMahon, like that? Uh, yeah, I think that's right, mate. McMahon. Okay. No. <laughs> what? McMahon. McMahon. No, 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 there's, it's not, it's Mahon, not Manon. <laughs> McMahon. Muk, muk, muk Mahon. There we go, I've got yeah. it. Right, let's do it one more time. I bet you Steph's going to put this take. in, but this is awful. Stefan, is that the take? Yeah, it's the take. No, it's yeah, not Stefan's the take. just said. <laughs>